and gentleman. I actually don't think I got it. Unless I'm looking at the wrong email account. Okay. Tristan, where did you send my that to, Trish? Because I got the other emails, but I don't remember seeing the agenda. It was came in the newsletter. I'm sending it now. Oh, Ooh, the newsletter. Give me a second. The agenda was attached to the newsletter. Now check your email. She just sent it to you. Yeah, my fault. I didn't see the attachment. I'm good. All right, so can we have a motion to accept the agenda? No, we couldn't do motions. Hmm? I thought we couldn't do motions. Oh, you know what? We can't. You're right. Okay. Everyone's looked at it. Nobody has any conflicts. All right, and we won't be able to approve the minutes of the next meeting, but does anybody have any questions on the minutes for Trish or anybody? Okay, well, we'll have to roll the approval of the minutes into the next meeting then. Um, there's no business arising if nobody has any questions or concerns. Correspondence, Trish. Up, Sorry, I don't have any correspondence. Okay. Okay, no correspondence. Uh, we'll move on to Trish and she's going to share her screen with the uh, financial report. Okay, can everyone see the financials there then? Yes, no. Okay. Um, so this is your 2020 budget to actual. These are the first set of numbers that we've received to date because the books hadn't closed yet. So this is the most up-to-date numbers that we have. Yep. Um, so we've got the levy is the money's been deposited basically to us now. Um, we've budgeted $2,000 for membership fees, which are associates, but we had extra uh, new members come on board this year. So we've got $2,200 there. Um, so our total revenue is up just a smidge from what our budget was last year. Um, expenditures to date. So we've really just spent money on um, advertising, basically. So that's the banner ads we put in the advocate, a music in the park ad, or sorry, um, the, yeah, sorry, the music in the park cancellation one we did do. Um, so that's sort of those for now. Um, not 100% sure what the meeting expenses, so I can look into that. We had our OBIA membership that was paid. Um, salaries and benefits. So you were sitting very much under for our expenses right now. The projects that we had budgeted for, uh, we budgeted $2,500 for um, downtown decorations and the water bottle refilling station. So the 2000 has come out for those downtown decorations now. And then um, some money was spent under the website cost category. So I'll have to just double check what that expense might have been as well. Um, so we're sitting obviously really well right now because um, we haven't done a whole lot with COVID. Um, so is there any questions about anything on year to date right now? Everybody good? Thumbs up. Okay. So if there's no questions to that, um, I can move into my work plan. Okay. Um, everyone can see the work plan, okay. So this is the 2020 work plan that we discussed at the, um, just before the AGM, kind of finalized it at the AGM and what we're working through for the 2020 year, uh, the board and myself. So, um, unfortunately, a lot of the things that we have listed haven't happened, um, so I don't know if we can make any decisions on some things tonight on how we want to move forward, but um, right now we've really had to pivot, oops, sorry, 
really had to pivot um, the way the work plan has gone due to COVID. So I've highlighted um, items that I've done that are COVID related in here as well. So um, events and education, we were hoping to do the music in the park, Christmas street party, a couple um, seminars, so theft prevention, cybersecurity, AODA standards. Um, I'm wondering if uh, the board would like me to potentially look into seeing if we could still maybe do the theft prevention, cybersecurity, but shift it to online since we really shouldn't be holding anything in person still. Um, is that something that we'd like, maybe like to pursue? Does anybody have any questions or concerns for Trish about switching it from in-person to online? Hi, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm unmuted or not. Yep, we can yes. hear you. I, I think we should wait. I, I, I can't see pursuing anything right now, probably until the end of the year. Okay. I, I feel online. like a lot of people are getting a little bit tired of online and Zoom. <laughs> Yeah. At this point. Yeah. I'm kind of with you there, Heather. Yeah, I I I would say we're not getting much participation in, in online, I you know. Yeah. Okay, so we'll just kind of sit on the education and events right now. Uh one thing I did want to highlight is with COVID, I did a couple TV, uh, cable TV ads. So those were just the cancellations for the music in the park event. Um, I'm wondering if we, I've seen a couple other BIAs that have canceled their Christmas uh, downtown parties that they usually have. So I'm wondering if it's something that we maybe want to look at potentially canceling or do we want to rediscuss it in the month? Is there another thing we could do to still have the businesses maybe be open late, uh, promote sales, that sort of thing? I heard if you've got nothing going on, I don't see why people would even consider staying open late. Like there's no dry right. cart to First, open. I feel like we struggle a little bit with some of the businesses getting them to stay away, uh, stay awake, stay open late when uh, we have things going on. Actually, uh, New Hamburg just did a sidewalk sale, which actually worked out really well. So, I mean, it's we may just have to tweak what we're doing so i'd say we sit on it and think about it so maybe i'll write down sidewalk sale maybe for now and that could be something we could look at pursuing in a couple months maybe something to think of yeah i try the as i can see what new hamburg's doing the board the board's pretty much dead down there as well too so i mean uh, they have a santa claus and all that stuff and most of it's all being canceled right now so i wonder if we do plan on canceling our november event and plan on doing a really big april spring with double the amount of money right because we won't have used and we do a welcome back to downtown or something in april it's a thought We're still doing the Christmas BIA box, though. I would hope so. So, yes. I don't know. The other thing I thought of with the BIA box, which I was going to get down to in a bit, was what if we open up the Christmas promotion? Um, if we maybe open that up so that it starts earlier than November, maybe if we started it October maybe not October 1st, that might be ambitious, but what if we started to run that promotion a little bit earlier than what we normally do as an option? We usually or start shortly. We talked about, Day. oh, sorry, go ahead, Bert. We usually start shortly after Remembrance Day. So, I mean, really the holdup on that is, is the BIA bucks themselves. If we have the number available for us and if we, if we don't, I mean, that's to me the holdup is after that. It's just a matter of go and talk to TD if they're prepared to do it a little longer. What if we did a promotion to win more BIA bucks? How about 
one of those darn elf on the shelves and we hide them around town and you find the elf on the shelf. And if you find it, uh, you either entered in a draw or you win money for finding it or something like that. I think that kind of reverts to Bert's um, hide the heron that he's been trying to get on the work plan. <laughs> Hey, um, on the shelf works just as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, the elf on the shelf would be good for Christmas. Um, I I think that if the if the board would be okay with it, I think we should do some more um, like shop local promotions and bi about giveaways um, via social media, like Ashley has suggested before from Perth County. Um, she gave us that idea that maybe we should do a little bit more of that to entice people to come downtown, spend their dollars. Um, so that's an option. What if we find, I don't know, what if we do six or eight elves, maybe not spend the money on the actual elf on the shelf, but we find some from the dollar store or something and we put downtown eight or 10 or in different businesses and they have to find them all. We can do a run of promotion through the paper, you know, uh, with a picture of the elves. I don't even know, something like that and they have to find them all and we enter them in a draw i like it or is that too complicated i, I like the, maybe doing it weekly and having one and we could do it over seven or eight weeks okay that's fair and then that gives maybe more people an anticipation because you know everybody's going to tell everybody where they are after the first week kind of thing and everybody's going to going to enter the draw this way they have to be downtown that week you know they're going to have to be more more astute i guess so do uh one elf per week for seven weeks they find the one elf hand it in or whatever and then yep. when have, the a draw. Elves, have a draw every week have a draw every week what if we approach businesses that if they find the elf in the business, they get something instantaneously and then their name goes in a draw right in the business. So you have to like actually go, let, let's, let's take Bert's store. Um, they have to go into Bert's store. He's got the elf somewhere by the fish tank, whatever it is. They find it. He's going to give them a coupon for, save the tax for finding the elf. So that encourages them to shop in his store. And there's the draw box is actually in the store and they enter right in his store. And then we collect the box and do the draw. That well, that work. Would work? Yeah. Yeah, you'd keep the box hidden otherwise they'd know the elf is in there. But I mean, yeah. That's, uh, yeah. I was gonna say, you have to Wherever the elf is, you keep the draw box there. They find the elf, it goes in the box. So, yeah, I, I think it works. Yeah, I, like, I like the idea of having a box at the store so then people know the elf is somewhere in that store. Find it. We'll get your name. Oh, they had to find the elf first, Trish. Yeah. They don't see yeah, the box. You got oh. to gotta keep the box out of the thing. Otherwise, everybody knows where it is. Gotcha. But, okay. But, uh, yeah. I, I completely agree, but I think we keep it. Um, we keep it where the, the draw box is behind your desk and yeah. you do the draw ticket in your thing so that they're not chasing down somewhere else to do the draw. Yeah. And yeah, if business that agrees to host the elf must agree to host um, like a coupon. I don't want to give, I don't want to give stuff away. I want people to give a 10% off coupon or a save the tax coupon. So it encourages people to shop in that store. Yeah. Okay, so I will send a note around then by newsletter to see who would like to participate in that. I'll start the week after. And we'll start right away the Monday after November 11th. Fair? That should give us time to get it up and running, yeah. Okay. Um, so that'll kind of be our event sort of thing for now. And we give the elf Jeff Brick's face. <laughs> that, would, that would work. That would kind of scare people. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, <laughs> so for marketing, I've got uh, for marketing, I've got the um, annual feedback survey. So I haven't sent out a survey yet this year. Um, I'm not really sure what questions we would like to pose to them. I know it's a really trying time and I don't know, like you guys said earlier, that it's appropriate that we maybe ask what, you know, events and seminars they're interested in. Um, do you want me to send a survey this fall? And if so, what kind of route would you like it to go? You're muted, Sherry. Oh, no, she, uh, she was just No, talking I was just me. talking to Trish. We're good. You guys go ahead. If you want me to uh, host or send out a survey, that's an option is we could retailer it maybe to see, you know, what could the board and the BI coordinator do to help you during this time? Or maybe we don't send one this year. I don't know what people are thinking. I don't know. Can you put a trick question in so we know what they're reading it? We could well, I, actually. I read it by the fact that they open it, but. I'd say it's a reach out to see if there's if there's opportunities they think that the BIA can help with the with the businesses. It's, now we just have to figure out the correct question. Okay. So I'll come up with some ideas then, and I could just email the board, and we could get that rolling maybe before our October meeting. Um, more shop local campaigns. So maybe you know, yeah, next month we can always talk about more. But I think this Elf on the Shelf is a fantastic idea to start which incorporates our BIA bucks. Um, so the program, I know I got the bank last year, TD Bank was able to actually sell them till the end of January. Uh, so January 31st, they kept them there and then we moved them to town halls. So um, they're more than happy to keep it from, you know, around the November 11th mark to the end of January. I don't know that they would start any earlier, but if it's something that the board would like to pursue, I can ask the question. Um, Again, I can easily get the numbers of what we have left here at Town Hall, and then we can get more ordered. Yeah, because we should have a bunch, because of the way we redid it, there should still be enough to get going, even if we started early, without having to worry about waiting for them. Right, yeah, and I think too, with these giveaways, um, you know, like the giveaways will help deplete our stock, but uh, I, there's enough to start us, I think. So um, next month too, I can put it that next month we pick a date to start or do you want to start November 1st this year? Just what are some options? I would start earlier. I'm, I'm thinking it's a good idea. So earlier than November 1st or November 1st? I would start earlier than November 1st. So another option is, is uh, even the Tuesday after Thanksgiving, October 13th, or we could bump it to Monday the 19th. Let's do Monday the 19th so that we're not caught up in the Thanksgiving sort of shuffle in there. Okay, so I'll get an inventory and then I'll reach out to Bert and we'll figure out numbers then. That should be enough time to get things rolling. Yeah, I agree. Um, some other items were the uh, Facebook Live business spotlight. So I haven't done that yet because I wasn't going into businesses during COVID. So I might suggest that maybe we hold on that till next year. Um, but whatever everybody would like. Um, the Tag Your Bag event, we had an owner baby photo contest. I don't know if that's still something on the radar or the spring. Let's leave that one for spring. Let's really focus on this elf on the shelf after the 11th of November and into Christmas. Okay. And then another thing under marketing was the uh, radio advertising. So I don't know if it's something I, I've hear, I'm hearing of a lot of other BIAs are now on the radio and like they're on the news um, on the commercials. I don't know if we want to maybe start looking at pursuing something like like that yeah that's a hard one um, um, 
Maybe we should get a drone flying around downtown like Stratford was doing for some of their ads. So I, yeah, I did see that too. So Stratford actually did a video that I can send out um, to the board or BIA wide if we want. It's um, kind of like a shop local video. So they did do drone footage and it was, it was really neat. And I think we should look at pursuing something like that. I know a couple people with drones, so. <laughs> I think that's a fabulous idea. I think we have Trish pursue that a little bit, especially at Christmas with the Christmas lights downtown, maybe a few night pictures, few day pictures. The other thing is um, when we get to it, the postcard, for instance, I would have ideally liked to have a, a shot of the whole downtown. So stand in the middle of the street and take a picture of the whole downtown, but it's tough with traffic on Highway 8. So uh, drone footage would be amazing, I think, um, if we decide to run the flyer postcard again. So talking about the postcard, Trish, what, what was that complaint um, that Steve received? Does anybody understand it? Um, yeah, I do. So um, the one picture on the left-hand side of the postcard was an old heritage photo of downtown. And on the right-hand side, I took a picture of the downtown. And I was standing in front of TD and I was pointing downtown. Um, when the flyer was put together, it for some reason, it was put on there flipped. So instead, oh. of, instead of TD being on the left, it was now on the right. Really? Yeah, and I don't know why that happened, but um, I did get a lot of good feedback. And I mean, the flyer looked, it did look great. I think it was just an oversight from everyone. Um, well, I looked there, at it and I couldn't, I couldn't see any difference, so. Yeah, and I didn't hear, like, I just heard a lot of good things. Like, oh, I saw that you guys had a BA flyer in my mailbox. And I was like, oh, neat. Like, they really liked it. Um, so I didn't get any negative feedback. I think it was just one little minor, minor detail. That one that person, one through. person noticed. Yeah. yeah I know. So I, I think it was more of a comment than a complaint. Yeah. Yeah. We looked at it. That's, that's half the battle. That's, that's right. That's. Yeah. I think that's huge. So that's, um, yeah, I, we ended up, I, I can actually scroll down a little bit here. Um, so sorry, part of the marketing here next is uh, social media. I've basically shared stuff from the municipality, the health unit and the government. And then in regards to the flyer, it went out August 17th and we sent um, 3,240 flyers out of the Metro Post Office. So that covers um, all of West Perth plus Kirkton and Woodham. And then we sent 274 out of Dublin, which actually covers um, in town Dublin and then in the rural routes part of the rural routes aren't in West Perth and part of it is so I just sent it to all of them um so that hit every apartment business um house um and farm so we hit a really big area um yeah so I, I, I think it was well received, but like Bert had mentioned before too, is how do you know what your return on investment is? It's not like a flyer that a business hands out and then people come in for your sale. So I, I think it was- the reverse image then got them talking about it. So on one side, that's a plus. Yep. And I think it was more of just an awareness uh, flyer as well to say, you know, hey, we're open, come check us out. But I understand the, you know, potential for, well, what does that look like in- return on investment for us so um so i guess is there any other marketing items um for instance i guess the elf on the shelf thing i could work with the advocate to put a nice um ad in the paper to promote that program as well a little bit are you wanting to set a budget for that or what do we have in what do we have in the average? It would go out of the advertising budget. Yeah, so we've only spent $1,697 to date. So you've still got lots of lots of wiggle room. I, my suggestion is, and please jump in here. My suggestion is, is that we just budget as we go. Let's, if something comes up and we get an opportunity to spend a little money to advertise more, we'll do it. Agree or any other thoughts? Oh, no, that's a good plan. 
Okay. I think we, we have the money. Um, we really got to focus on shopping downtown. We're not having the Christmas street party this year, so we can, we've got money. Okay. So I can work with um, the advocate then to just see, yeah, what uh, size what size ad I can put in and what the costs are. So I'll keep everybody in the loop on that then. Um, and of course I'll run the same stuff on social media as well. And then lastly uh, is uh, the membership section. So um, if these are kind of ongoing things, creating a brochure for BIA members, um, how can we attract more associates? Um, that just kind of happened this year. We had quite uh, two or three new ones joined. So um, I think it's just kind of getting out there on its own. Um, how do we increase meetings, at, attendance at our meetings? Um, same thing, um, ongoing, currently not possible because of COVID. So that's on hold. The insurance program with SARE, it is up and going. So they've sent me a link that I've put in the last couple of newsletters. It's a direct link to contact them to get a quote. Um, they like there hasn't been a whole lot of interest yet there's been a I think a couple people have kind of gone in um, it depends when your insurance is up for renewal too so they did do a winner um, Barry Ite had won the other month so pardon Um, so he got BIA bucks and then I've got more BIA bucks that they've purchased uh, that I'm going to drop off this week so um, yeah, that's that program. And then and other points of COVID here, um, you know, council had amended the sidewalk policy and procedure to help businesses recoup for 2020. Um, business directory, so the, that Excel spreadsheet that I have on the website to list where businesses kind of stood, I haven't updated that recently, but um, I will get that done ASAP. And then newsletters, we're looking at, I've sent about one to three a month. It just depends on what's going on in the month, what we need to get out to businesses. Um, it's a little bit quiet right now. So um, I want to keep the communication going so that they know that we're here for them. So um, we'll just kind of start pulling some stuff together. Just a couple of things that popped in my mind as Trish was talking. Do we want to do a Halloween draw or a Halloween special? So another uh, bullet up here is events and education. So add color downtown and season displays. So that's something I see other BIAs doing where they get their, all the businesses jump on board with decorating their storefronts. And I think it would be something really nice to have in our downtown. Um, so that's something we could promote is, um, I guess Halloween would be the next holiday coming up. So we could promote that and then, um, yeah, do it a draw or like what are you thinking for Halloween draw or something separate than decorating? Um, I don't know vote for your favorite downtown window how would we vote and what do we do yeah, the other thing is, is thing. sorry the seasonal thing is said, like get them people to decorate the windows for a seasonal thing and do a seasonal display competition Right. The, um, there's a lot of BIAs that are doing, so they're uploading um, like an album of all the storefronts and then you have to decorate, like they'll decorate their storefronts. People like or love the photo on Facebook and then, um, you know, the business that gets the most likes and that sort of thing, they would get um, like a little certificate that says best decorated store or something like that. So maybe that's something we do. <laughs> what about this just popped in my head too as we're talking what if we reward the business that got the most likes with bia bucks to that a, they can then give away any way that they want within their store like 50 dollars or something that they can have a draw in their store to get more people in but we're giving them the prize money Thoughts? Sure. <laughs> or does that sound not 
please go. Well, I don't know. That's, it sounds all right. It's, how, how do we know they're going to give it to the, one of their customers, though? Aren't we all honest? We just have to trust that they will. Like we we tell them that we want them, they won for their window. We're going to give them 50 BIA dollars. Um, and we're going to ask them then to have a draw within their own store for their customers. So I get for people to come in, I guess. But we're giving them we're giving them the money. We're giving them the prize money. Um, so, sorry, I want to revert back to the Elf on the Shelf. How much um, did you want to give away in BIA bucks there? So that was another thing that popped in my mind as we were chatting. So we have a weekly draw for Finding the Elf. And then everyone goes from each week, everybody in the draw boxes goes into a big box. And we do a big prize at the end. So you yeah. could potentially yeah. win twice. Oh, I'd say start with 50 on the weekly. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, since we do the uh, the maximum of 250 for for the Christmas, why not do a 250 for the overall big one? Yeah. I think that's fabulous. So $50 a week. And then every name that's in the box, we go into the store, get the box, put it into another big box. 250 is the grand prize at Christmas or the week before Christmas. I think that's good. Yep. Um, okay. So the, we'll get businesses to decorate their storefronts. I'll make sure I get photos. We'll make an album on Facebook, get people to like, and the business with the most likes will get $50 in BIA bucks to go and donate um, or do a draw at their store for um, customers to use. Okay. Say so before we move on that, there was a couple of years ago, was it either Steve or Doug that offered up, a bulk purchase of garland for the downtown. Uh, Steve did. Just making that up. No, Steve did. Steve did. Yeah, yeah so okay. we had to order it like Early. now. And we had a hard time getting businesses to commit to spending yeah. $200 on garland in like September. Yeah. Good point. Forget that. Okay. Um, so then the one item I don't have on the work plan, sorry, is I did uh, go around to businesses. Um, so the municipality received a donation of uh, masks. So I went around to the businesses that are open to the public and gave them a pack of 10 masks. Um, that was extremely well received. The businesses were very grateful that they got that donation. And I've had a lot of feedback too when I was handing them out that Many people going into our stores downtown are wearing masks. Um, there's the odd person that's not. So I, I mean, if I'm speaking boldly on behalf of the businesses, I think that people are very happy with how COVID's being handled here. Um, so, I mean, kudos to our customers that are coming downtown. Um, but that was something else I did. So there's obviously some businesses that weren't open to the public. I don't, I didn't give them. Um, masks. So I do have a couple uh, that are that I have as spares that if uh, businesses would like them that did not receive them, please email me and I'll get them to you in the next week or so here. Um, is there anything else you want to work on on the work plan or we'll just get started with this for now um, and then kind of go from there? I think that's good for now. Yeah, I think it's a really good start. Perfect. Thank you, Trish. Um, we'll move on. Ashley, you're up. Hi, everyone. Should I turn my camera on the, for this, Trish? Uh, yes, please. Here we go. Hi, everyone. So to start off, um, our transportation project is underway and the transit project coordinator Maggie wanted me to let you guys know that she's going to be reaching out to BIAs in the next few weeks in regards to support on some marketing efforts and just to align the marketing with everyone so you can expect to hear from Maggie in the upcoming weeks. 
Uh, next, our summer newsletter has been released and you can find that on our website or on our social media pages. Um, also, our Perth County podcast episodes are still being released on a weekly basis. Um, content varies from accessing new funding programs, considering creative and innovative ways to operate during this time and more. Uh, the episodes are very short and sweet, get straight to the point so you can absorb the information and move on with your day. Um, there's a new survey that has been released by the University of Guelph in partnership with United Way, Salvation Army, and Municipal Partners. So that survey is looking to understand the ongoing impacts of COVID-19 on residents from small and rural communities across Huron and Perth counties. So questions on the survey relate to how people have experienced the pandemic, how shopping behavior has changed and how your behaviors will change into the future. So you can find more information on that survey online, but I think it's gonna come out with some really good data. That's great for Perth County. So we're encouraging you to take the survey and to share it with your networks. Um, as I mentioned last meeting, I believe we have received some tourism funding money from FedDev through the Tourism Industry Association of Ontario. So we've had a few projects um, already launched, a couple on the way with that money. So we've had the recovery care kits um, are got mostly gone out. We have a couple more to deliver this week. Um, which included masks, um, decals, sanitizers. I don't know if you guys have seen them. I was downtown Mitchell today and saw a bunch of our foot pump sanitizers at different businesses. Um, so that's wrapping up. And right now we're in the middle of our traveling deal wheel promotion. So we have a prize wheel that is traveling around the county for 10 days from business to business um, and anyone who visits that business to shop, dine, have whatever experience that specific business offers can spin the wheel and win gift cards to other businesses, um, Perth County swag items, uh, et cetera. So, so far it's been to Life's a Party in Listowel and Jillian's in Mitchell. Um, it was there today, so for the next eight days now, it will keep going to different businesses and we're announcing it every morning to have a little bit of a element of surprise. Um, we have a farm gate signage program underway as well to support our farm gate map that was developed in 2019. So farm gates who are on the map and who want to be on the map will be receiving a signage package, some promotional items um, that will be set up this fall, just so people who are driving by can identify them a little bit quicker and know where they can pull in and purchase food, um, things like that. We've had two groups of travel writers visit Perth County in 2020. Um, having travel writers, we kind of went back and forth about it this year, but we're doing our best to balance um, negotiating resident sentiment on visitors coming here um, and encouraging visitors to support our local businesses. So the two articles that have been written for us were very tasteful, really well done. We've had all positive feedback about them um, and you can find those on social media and they'll be going up on our website this week. Um, in addition to that, we're doing some uh, video marketing, photography, some digital marketing campaigns, just trying to encourage people to keep spending their dollars in Perth County and promoting Perth County as a great place to uh, visit as always. I think that's it for me. Can we get a little bit of Perth County swag for our Elf on the Shelf? Yes. To sweeten the deal? Yes. Businesses can, whatever business we put it in, they can hand out some magnets or whatever you've got. Yep. I can uh, write you down on the list. Okay. Get some Trish will get on you for that. Throw yeah. some swag. Yeah. I think it just sort of sweetens the deal, helps businesses. 
totally can hand it out. Sorry, um, I didn't realize I was muted. Uh, next, Mr. Brick. He's sleeping in the closet there. there. Oh, Elf on the Shelf, there he is. Yeah, with oh, Jeff's sorry. Face. Oh, sorry, I had to move my camera. Sorry, sorry about that. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> that was a good cheap shot. Uh, thanks, well placed, well played. I have two updates. Um, First of all, I just want to talk about the municipal office and public and meetings for committees and council. Actually, a couple, I, I got two on that topic, but um, uh, we, as you all uh, may have been reading in the media or following along, we have uh, made a number of engineering changes in the office to move staff around and move offices around, spread people out. Um, we've got that done, we've got the policies ready and we opened the office on August the 17th to on-demand service. Um, that's been going fairly well. We had to do on-demand because the design of the office, the vestibules aren't big enough to have more than one person in. So that's the way we're managing the flow of traffic. Um, like I said, I think it's going very well. Um, we're still looking at options for how we're gonna restart in-person or hybrid um, council meetings and committee meetings. Uh, don't have a schedule for doing that yet where we obviously have to look at social distancing, um, the cap on the number of people inside, public access, mask wearing, and a number of things like that. So in all of those cases where um, we're assessing how we're gonna make that work and we'll keep you informed. Um, we, we agree that it's not ideal that to keep going, especially for smaller committees to keep going with um, uh, online only. Um, but at this point in time, it's really the still, at this point, it's the only viable option and we're looking at ways to, to expand that. So um, I want you to know about that. The second thing I wanna mention in terms of municipal council business for the BIA is that um, we're gonna change the way we publish accounts on public websites. And um, so we're asking committees or we won't provide committees any longer with detailed statements of accounts that the check registry in effect that, that uh, reflects every transaction that we've made. And there's security reasons for not doing that. And um, it's, a, it's a way for uh, municipalities to get um, kind of hacked from a financial standpoint uh, in terms of patterning the behavior of the municipality. So we're, we're going to change that to a summary, not unlike what Trish showed you this evening. And then the last update I want to give you is about the EV charging station. So um, Earth, uh, so Erie Thames Power Corporation, or Earth Power Corporation um, was successful in obtaining a grant to um, put two EV charging stations in Mitchell. Uh, Council, Economic Development, and BIA were unanimous in their recommendation that we put the EV charging stations in the downtown. Um, so we've been working on finding a logical place. We want to go in front of the Cenotaph and that wasn't an option because of power availability. So what we needed was a place where there's power. We needed a place with a boulevard in order to make the charging station work so the wires didn't go across the road. And so um, if you look around our downtown, we have a lot of curb face. And so we did, we did locate one spot, which is at the southwest corner of Ontario Road and St. David Street. And so these sites are on the south side of Ontario Road. Um, and they're at the eastern edge of the downtown and actually looking at the sites and looking at downtown uh, parking patterns and that, it actually is pretty much an ideal site. Um, it's not right in the downtown, but if someone parks there to charge their vehicle for a couple of hours, they can't help but see that the downtown's right there. And that was the plan. So um, we're expecting Earth to uh, begin work on that very soon. So I'm happy to answer any questions if anyone has any of those costs are all being borne by Earth and the cost for operating will be borne by Earth for 10 years. Say, hey Jeff, so if we do want detailed numbers, can we still get them without having them posted? Yes. 
Yeah, absolutely. If you would like detailed numbers, we'll share them. The way we're handling that for council is we're emailing the reports and encouraging questions. Uh, we really didn't want to change past practice, but because of um, we just got some advice about from a security perspective, we needed to. No, I can understand that. As long as we can get the detail, if we need them, that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. We sure can. And we'll have them. I mean, we can pull those ledgers, um, the GLs, we can pull them very easily and forward them. So it's, it's uh, yeah, great question, Bert. There's no intention to cut that. It's just a matter of not publishing them publicly. Okay. So Trish has the GLs at any given time, Bert. Oh, he missed, we lost him. Trish has the GLs at any given time and she can share them with you whenever you want it. Oh, sounds good. Okay. Thanks everyone. Still muted there, Sherry. Sorry. Um, I'm just gonna back up now that we have quorum. Um, we're just gonna back up real quick. And can I get um, a motion uh, for confirmation of the agenda? Please, Heather, and a seconder. Don't everybody jump at once, Bert. Okay, thank you. And we'll get an approval of the minutes from the July 22nd, 2020. So I can motion to approve the minutes. Heather, Brent? Yep, Brent gets it. Perfect, Brent gets it. Thank you for, thank you, thank you. Okay, so just wanted to tidy up that little piece of business there before we moved on. So other prison, other business, you did your 2020 work plan. Um, the only little piece of other business I'd like to touch on is never fun, um, but we do have to discuss attendance, a um, little bit of housekeeping. Um, during the COVID months, we were short um, members frequently, which makes it a bit hard to make decisions and move forward. Um, we do have a bylaw that states if you miss, is it three, Trish? Three, tri three Trishes. Three in a row. Uh, three in a row. Um, we do have an option to remove you from the board. We obviously don't want to do that. Um, and we gave a lot of grace over COVID. But moving forward, we are going to have to stand behind our bylaw. Just put that out there for everyone. We all are busy. We all have families, friends, lives. Um, but we made a commitment to the board. We asked to be put on it. And we just moving forward. I just want everyone aware that we will have to hold the missed meeting bylaw to to test, I guess, is the word for it. Well, if you don't, just a little you housekeeping. Anybody have anything else for um, new business? Yep, Trish. Okay, so something I forgot to touch on, um, I got an email from Abby, the recreation uh, coordinator. She was approached by Live Well about um, having this program called the West Perth Experience. <clears throat> So I'll just quickly read the letter she sent me. I said I wanted to speak with the board about it, um, get your blessing about, um, I would say, we could just put it into the newsletter and help to put the word out there to the businesses. Um, but what they're doing is they're planning stages of a new program that they've called uh, the West Perth Experience. The idea is to have experience packages available throughout the municipality and live well for life uh, that people that are interested can purchase. So the packages will change se seasonally and uh, what will be included in each is like a guided tour of the West Perth trail system by Live Well, followed by a visit to a local restaurant. So for example, a fall package might be Live Well guided jogger walk through the West Perth trail system, followed by lunch at the restaurant of your choice. Um, the options will be listed. And then a winter package might be snowshoe rental, uh, with a Live Well for Life guided tour through the West Perth Trail, followed by a warm beverage and dessert at the restaurant of your choice. Um, so they say um, in the letter, we believe this program would be a great way to showcase the beautiful trails in West Perth, as well as promote some of our local restaurants. And it would give them, they're, they're hoping to, to start this in the fall of 2020. So, um, sorry. 
Yeah, I the BI could definitely join in somehow. Um, I don't know how you're thinking though. I don't have how a problem. Can we join into this. I think it's important that we do. Yeah. You, you need to do something with it. So I mean, I are we? I hundred percent agree. I know with uh, with the store, we've talked the last couple of years about trying to do a walk the dog around the trails. It's just it's just never happened. But are they doing anything with regards to the opening of the bridge? I mean, this will be the first time we've got an actually potential circular loop for the trail, which was one of the reasons it was a made Jeff? sure we include the trail in the process. So. Well, Jeff, jump in here. Yeah, so the, certainly the bridge creates the loop and um, there was some extra work put into the bridge to ensure the loop. Um, we, we had uh, a bunch of trail planning work and trail signage work on the work plan for 2020 that we are just, we, we're not getting to. We're gonna have to push it to next year. We had put some money in the budget to do some design work on signage and do some design work for new uh, pamphlets and things. So um, we're, we're heading down that path. I think we have to design pamphlets and signage with a 10 year uh, kind of lifespan because they hang around for that long. So, you know, putting a specific program in is probably not a great idea, but connecting in some way to current programming is with, um, with a Q code or something. So we'll be considering that kind of thing. And that's a good, this integration opportunity for the program that uh, was just outlined. I think we can look at something like, you know, look at the BIA for promotions and then, you know, they, they put their camera up and scan the code and they get sent to current promotions or something. And we put that right in the trail flyers. So there's that kind of thing we can do. So we would look at that at the same time. Um, what if we have Trish reach out to Live Well and ask them if they have any expenses that they think they might incur that we could help with? Um, or did they want some BIA bucks for a draw, like $25 That's for a, a downtown draw. Um, we could maybe ask our friendly neighborhood tourism officer here for some swag that they could give out to the participants, if she's still listening. I don't know, um, an echo. <laughs> with, your, um, with your BIA bucks, the, that would be a good idea. Maybe anybody that actually attends the tour would be entered into a draw to win the BIA bucks. So they attend the tour, go to the restaurant, and then do the draw there. Yeah, sounds like a um, plan. And I don't know if we want to offer to help cover expenses or leave it for Live Well to... Well, you can reach out and see where they're going. I mean, we don't have a lot of details yet, so. Yeah. And then um, Trish, once she reaches out and finds out the more scope of it, and maybe she'll get an idea of how we can help more. But I think a $25 draw or more than that. Looking sure, for- why not? <laughs> Sorry? I like the echo effect, so sure, why not? <laughs> Sorry, it's hard because we're in the same room. Um, and then we can have Trish reach out to the county if LiveWell is interested in some uh, reusable bags or something like that to give to each each participant. Yeah, Trish, once you get a little bit more information, just loop me in on that and we'll see how we can help. Perfect, thank you. And Heather, did you have something? <laughs> Okay, Is that said, if we have nothing else, does anyone have anything they would like to bring up or add? No more questions? And then I guess we are motion to adjourn. Look at that, Heather and Bert. Thank you, everybody. Perfect. Thank you.